Yes. Uh, good morning to everyone. I welcome all of you to the 44th lecture in the lecture series in nonlinear dynamics conducted by the Department of Nonlinear Dynamics, Bharti Dawson University, with the support from Rusa 2.0. It is my pleasure to introduce Professor Ian Market to you all. Professor Market obtained a PhD in physics from the, from the University of Montreal, Canada. He carried out postdoctoral studies in England for two years and moved to Australia with a discovery early award, early career award from Australian Research Council, popularly known as ARC. In 2018, he has been awarded ARC Future Fellowship and continuing his research at the University of Brisbane, Australia. Professor Margaret works on three different topics and their intersections. In a broader sense, his interests include integrable and exactly solvable systems, their related algebraic structures and special functions. Besides these broader areas, he also work, works on algebraic pathe and sorts, quantum inverse scattering method, pain limit transcendence, E algebras and their realizations and so on. He had published a very large number of papers on these topics. Under his supervision, four students have completed PhD and two students are currently working. I used to read and refer to Professor Margaret's papers often, as I am also working on integrable systems. Many of his papers are very interesting. With this short introduction, now I invite Professor Margaret to deliver his lecture. Over to you, Professor. Ah, many thanks for this invitation. Uh, I will now share the uh, screen. Okay, so now it should be in full screen yes. uh, mode. Yes. Okay, yes. so uh, I will try to discuss the connection between uh, what is known as the pain of it transcendent uh, in quantum mechanics and how they connect as well with very interesting uh, nonlinear R generalization of Lie algebras. So I will uh, start by uh, trying to connect as well with what is called the Lamy uh, operator. I will uh, then try to discuss the case of one-dimensional quantum Hamiltonian, and then I will try to discuss classification of two-dimensional superintegrable system, and more explicitly, uh, how they connect with uh, Penlevy transcendent. So the, those work have been uh, connected with some recent one uh, with some collaborator in Montreal and in uh, Hawaii, and as well, Willard Miller from uh, University of Minnesota and Bjorn Dunstan from uh, Sweden. Uh, so this is some reference that uh, you can consult. And okay, so the setting of the problem is the, the time independent uh, Schrodinger equation. And uh, we can think of that uh, problem as on Euclidean space, but it can be as well on a curved space. It can be a Riemannian manifold uh, and, or even a pseudo uh, Riemannian manifold. And what we can look for is a different type of system. So quantum integrable, uh, super integrable, uh, I will give some definition uh, later in the talk, and a different notion of exactly solvable or quasi-exactly solvable system. There exists different definition based on the theory of special function, but there exists also some algebraic characterization. And what I would like to emphasize is that in many contexts, the potential that are involved in the time independent Schrodinger equation is given in terms of some uh, polynomial function of the coordinate, rational function, trigonometric function as well, but even some transcendental uh, function. And maybe the most well-known example is in terms of elliptic function. So it can be the Jacobi or Weierstrass uh, function. And this connect with uh, a well-known uh, case, which is called the Lamy uh, operator. So this is the equation in the in the box. 
So this is the second derivative of some uh, function uh, psi of z. And then we have the uh, Jacobi elliptic function Sn uh, square. And we can think of B as, let's say, a coupling parameter, uh, something that tells about the interaction, let's say. And A can be think uh, as the energy uh, in some way, if we want to connect with the Schrodinger equation. So this uh, equation is, uh, at first look, linear. But because the uh, elliptic function appear in the potential, in some way, this is not quite a linear problem in the sense that it makes the problem uh, more uh, difficult uh, to solve. And it connects with what is known as the uh, uh, Lamy polynomial. And it has also some connection with quasi-exact solvability. But this type of problem have been connected with various area, such as uh, position mass dependent system uh, that some of you have worked on, uh, semiconductor uh, finite gap model, and even Calogero uh, system. So we can see that what looks like a simple, in some way, equation can lead to various applications in mathematics and uh, physics. So the, the talk will connect with a broader class of problem that involve potential that depend on uh, not only elliptic function, but Peyn-Levy transcendent or generalization of such. Uh, so here, this is just to uh, give you explicitly what is the equation that satisfies the Jacobi elliptic functions. So we can see that it can be written in terms of a, a cubic uh, here, uh, non-linearity. Non and uh, I will refer to that sort of problem as uh, exotic uh, potential uh, in a more general uh, term. And uh, so just to uh, give some detail on the Penelope transcendent, because maybe most of you are familiar with uh, those uh, elliptic uh, or even hyperelliptic function, uh, Penelope transcendent appear in the context of the study of nonlinear differential equation. So they have been obtained at the uh, around the 1900 uh, in a series of paper by Pain uh, Gambier and uh, Fuchs. And um, they found 50 type of equation uh, for which the uh, movable singularity are uh, poles. And there is some assumption here. Uh, there is the function f of z, w, uh, dw, dz. So this is uh, understood as a function that is uh, rational in uh, dw, dz, uh, algebraic. Yes. Excuse me, sir. Is yes. It, uh, the third point is 50 types or six types? Oh, OK. So if you just uh, start uh, the classification, there is 50 type of canonical form. Yeah. Uh, if you impose that the equation as a function that is analytic in Z, uh, algebraic in W and uh, rational in DW, DZ. And uh, what one can try to do is then to take those 50 canonical type and try to see if there exists some transformation that allow to map some of the equation to each other, or if some of the equation can be integrated using the known, let's say, elementary transcendental function. And among those 50 type, uh, 44 can be integrated or uh, map to a remaining six equations. So you, you start with those 50 canonical form, and then, uh, there is only six equations that are uh, understood to be, let's say, irreducible, okay? Meaning that they cannot be, uh, let's say, uh, solved in terms of elementary transcendental function. But uh, that topic has been, let's say, controversial for many years, and only in the 80s by Umemura and uh, Nishioka, it was proved that 
those six uh, type of pain levy that I give uh, on the slide here are irreducible. So by irreducible, I mean that for, uh, let's say, a generic value of the parameter, they cannot be solved in terms of the known, uh, let's say, uh, transcendental function. But for uh, if you can look, the, the second pain levy have one parameter, the third pain levy has uh, four parameters, the fourth pain levy has two parameters, the uh, fifth pain levy has uh, four parameters as well, and uh, the pain levy six have also four parameters. But for some of those uh, parameters, so families of, uh, let's say, uh, for those parameters, there will be some solution in terms of uh, let's say uh, orthogonal polynomial or rational function or hyper geometric function. But in general, you cannot solve those equ equations and we use those to define a uh, new transcendental function. Okay, so for example, the fourth point of view transcendent admit special solution in terms of what is known the generalized Hermit polynomial or the generalized Okamoto polynomial. And, and they appear in uh, widely in a uh, problem in mathematics and, and physics. They appear in statistical mechanics. They appear uh, in terms of quantum field theory, conformal field theory. Uh, if you try to do symmetry reduction, for example, the KDV equation or various uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation, you can get then uh, pain levy transcendent. So there are some things that uh, are in some way uh, fundamental for application in uh, theoretical physics, and they have also various uh, properties from a mathematical uh, point of view. And uh, just to, because we will uh, need uh, later to discuss some generalization, as I mentioned, the pain levy transcendent uh, appear in context of classification of second order uh, nonlinear differential equation. There exists some generalization by Shelley, Bureau, and Cosgrove to uh, third, fourth, and fifth order nonlinear differential equation having the pain levy property. And they will play a role later in what uh, I will uh, discuss. And those uh, equations by uh, Chazy, uh, Bureau, and Cosgrove, they admit as well for particular value of parameter reduction to the pain levy transcendent. Um, okay, so uh, there exists also various uh, generalization. There exists uh, Q uh, pain levy, discrete pain levy, and higher pain levy analog. This is something that is quite uh, a topic that is active in the integrable and exactly solvable system uh, community and that have, uh, let's say, uh, been uh, object of uh, study. Uh, in this talk, I will only rely on the pain levy transcendent and some higher order analog by uh, Chazy, Bureau, and Cosgrove. Okay, so before we try to look at uh, let's say, integrable or super integrable model uh, with, uh, let's say, on two-dimensional or higher-dimensional space, uh, I wanted to start with one-dimensional uh, Hamiltonian, okay? So the Hamiltonian that I will even discuss here uh, is a very simple form. This is the, the square of the momentum over two, so we even scale the mass to be uh, one we have the potential that depend on one uh, coordinate, so it depends on x, and we admit uh, operator L of nth order, and we can look at uh, four different uh, cases. Excuse me, Professor. Yes. Uh, in, in the bottom, you can see a scroll. You can oh, should I click hide? Hide, hide, hide. yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Oh, many thanks. Okay. Uh, so there is four cases that are, let's say, uh, canonical that you can uh, apply transformation to distinguish. And they are the case that 
this operator of end order. So we are in context of uh, quantum mechanics, but this could also have some classical analog as well. The, the two problems are distinct, but in quantum, in context of quantum uh, system, we uh, will have the following commutator. So we have the commutator of this Hamiltonian with uh, this operator L to be zero, to be the only uh, constant, to be the Hamiltonian itself, or to be this operator on the right side. So they are distinguished as Abelian, Eisenberg, conformal, and ladder. And uh, this case of the uh, uh, Abelian case with the operator L of third degree, for example, connect with the Lamy operator and with elliptic function. So we see that the Lamy operator and elliptic function uh, as potential become a, a particular case. And I will give you some uh, example, but this, uh, those problems have been studied uh, in the past. But in that paper, we studied it from a, a unified point of view from the classical and quantum picture and with the determining e equation for operator of nth order. But the case of third order have been discussed, uh, for example, the case Abelian by Yetarenta. There is also Fucic and Nikitin, uh, Dobner, Zedanov. And there is also some well-known paper by Vizlov and Shabbat. Uh, as well uh, in the 90s. And uh, what also we have been uh, discovering in that paper of uh, 2019 uh, with uh, Masumi Sayedi and uh, Pavel Winternitz was that the Chazy equation play a role when you try to, let's say, uh, solve explicitly uh, what type of Hamiltonian allow such algebraic structure. Here, I'm, I'm just giving you explicitly the compatibility equation, those mainly can be obtained directly. Uh, D is only uh, related to the derivative with X. Uh, so the V with the upper index uh, indicate the uh, order of the derivative for the potential. And CLG is uh, simply the uh, Newton uh, binomial coefficient. And uh, f of l are the unknown function uh, that appear in the operator l and that need to be determined. So you can think of this uh, problem as trying to obtain explicitly the potential v as well as the unknown function f of l. So that will bring you to a determining equation which are nonlinear and that need to be uh, solved. And in order to solve those equations, this is a complicated problem in general, but this can be carried for, let's say, uh, low order uh, with some, uh, I mean, with some difficulty, but it can be achieved. And uh, I will give you some ex examples. So it rely on solving explicitly uh, those determining equations, which are, uh, as I said, uh, nonlinear. Um, for example, uh, and here I, I won't give uh, a lot of detail for this case. So this is the case of uh, before. So before would refer to uh, a case related to Eisenberg. So my operator L, when I commute with the Hamiltonian, give me back the uh, a constant. So this is why it's referred as Eisenberg. And I'm looking at an operator of degree uh, four, order four. And if I commute with the, uh, uh, with the Hamiltonian and try to satisfy the determining equation, I can solve explicitly the unknown function f of L in terms of the potential. And I will obtain a, a single nonlinear ODE that the potential need to satisfy given by the equation at the bottom. And if we look carefully at this equation, this is uh, related to the first Penlevy transcendent. So if I ask for a uh, uh, Hamiltonian with one variable uh, to have an operator of order four, which when I commute with this Hamiltonian, give me a constant, this is the most general uh, 
potential that I can have. And this is directly given in, in terms of the first pain levy transcendent. So naturally, the pain levy transcendent appear as a consequence of solving the determining uh, equation. And uh, this can um, be carried for other uh, order, for other five. Uh, this can be also done explicitly. So here I'm just giving you uh, the end result with the, uh, I will give more detail uh, later on the overall strategy, how one can try to look at such uh, problem and why the Chazy class pl play a role. But here I would just use this example to show you that one can uh, not only obtain a uh, nonlinear equation here of four, four degree, but those equations can be manipulated to then connect with uh, the, uh, the work by Cosgrove of 2000. This is one member of that uh, classification. So the, those equations obtained by Chazy, Bureau, Cosgrove, uh, they appear quite uh, naturally. This is one of the cases that cannot be uh, obtained in terms of the pain levy. So this point out as well that there exists in some way higher pain levy analog that appear in the quantum mechanical uh, problem. Okay, so here, uh, this is uh, a third example that I wanted to, to give, and I denote this case by V of D4. This is a case of type D. So this means that when I take the commutation relation of the Hamiltonian with the operator of fourth degree, what I obtain is th back this operator of uh, fourth uh, degree, and one can solve explicitly the uh, unknown function f0, uh, f1, f2, f3, uh, and obtain the potential explicitly as well. Uh, so again, I, I will not mention uh, the method yet. I will spend some time uh, later to uh, give some insight. But this is the potential that we obtain. So the, if we look at this potential, it involves the fifth Pelevé transcendent, and it is uh, quite complicated in the form, but this potential have a lot of properties, and the first properties is the existence of this ladder operator, but this ladder operator uh, give as well the existence of uh, a polynomial Heisenberg algebra and the existence of a uh, of let's say uh, analog of highest weight uh, representation uh, for this uh, problem, meaning that you can find not only one zero mode, but you can find four zero mode, which are annihilated by that fourth uh, degree operator from which you can then apply as well a creation operator. So there is uh, a lot of properties to this Hamiltonian that I will not discuss explicitly, but uh, this Hamiltonian also connect with uh, what is known as exceptional orthogonal uh, polynomial of uh, Laguerre uh, type. So this is quite a rich uh, problem and uh, that one can spend some time to, uh, to study. So th th this example and the two other examples were uh, to try to... Me. Oh, excuse yes. Me, shall I raise a question now? Oh, um, yes, you can ask a question. Yeah. Uh, suppose if you start L with the Px square quadratic in moment R, what type of potentials do you get? Uh, only what? with, oh, you, uh, so you mean with the... Uh, the L operator with the quadratic moment R. Oh, okay. So if you start with quadratic, actually the quadratic, this is something to also uh, uh, learn from the uh, looking explicitly at cases is that uh, if you look at the different case A, B, uh, C, uh, the case A do not have solution if the operator is of order uh, one or two. This is only uh, the trivial case. The Heisenberg and uh, as well, the conformal case give you the potential one over X square. The latter case give you uh, for, uh, let's say, uh, first uh, 
order give you the harmonic oscillator and for second order it give you the singular oscillator so it gives you something of the form x square plus one over x square so only when you go to third degree uh, operator you will begin to get exotic potential uh, i have one more uh, oh, yes i need one more clarification you said something about rock wilson algebra Rock. Oh, yes. Yeah, can you uh, tell me one more time what you know? What is your comment? Okay, so the comment is in the in the case of the type D uh, that you have a ladder operator, you can then uh, construct not only the operator L, but by taking the adjoint, you can then form as well a, a, a raising operator. And then if you take the product of that lowering and raising operator, or you take the commutation relation between this lowering and raising operator, those relation will close in a polynomial way with the Hamiltonian, and they will then form a, what I call a polynomial Eisenberg algebra. Oh, yeah, thank you, Professor. Thank you. So, so, the, so the case D in some way, uh, is a bit more rich because it allowed to uh, develop uh, this uh, theory of representation for polynomial Heisenberg uh, algebra. And this is why this case uh, given by V D4 have uh, a lot of properties uh, here. And But here, uh, something to, um, to say, everything is only for one dimensional uh, system. And uh, there exist uh, different ways to try to look for exotic uh, potential. And one way is to look among the, what is referred as integrable or super integrable problem. So just to, to set the, uh, the problem uh, first, uh, I will do it in heuristic way. And in the next slide, I will give more formal uh, definition. Let's say you have a Hamiltonian uh, given in the following form. So this is something that live on the two-dimensional Euclidean space. Uh, so this is the sum of px square over two, py square over two. And you have the sum of, of a potential written on the form that is v1 of x and v2 of y. So this is something with separation of variable and Cartesian coordinate. There exists a search for uh, Hamiltonian that admit two integral of motion, uh, one of third uh, degree and the momentum and width uh, A and another integral B of that is polynomial in the momenta and that can be of order N. And those, because they are integral, we are in context of quantum mechanics, they will commute with the Hamiltonian, but they don't necessarily commute with each other. And then they will lead to uh, try to look at uh, the algebraic structure associated with this problem. And this I will give more uh, detail. But what this uh, is in fact, this is a case of super integrable system because there is two degrees of freedom and there is three independent integral, the Hamiltonian A and B. Uh, that can be uh, formalized uh, and that maybe some of you will find interesting because those definitions can be first, let's say, uh, discussed in context of classical mechanics and there is also uh, various uh, interesting model that come from the, the classical problem and they have as well a lot of properties. But first I will give you the, the definition of integrability and super integrability in the classical context and trying to uh, motivate what they mean for the quantum uh, system. So uh, uh, Hamiltonian uh, with let's say n dimension or n degrees of freedom with the following Hamiltonian. So there is the, the matrix. So there, there is something that we could be on the Euclidean, but it can be as well on a Riemannian space. And we have a potential, and this potential can be a scalar, but it can be as well something that depends on the magnetic field or other uh, type of interaction. And we are looking for 
uh, integral, which are in involution with the Hamiltonian, but in involution with themselves, so n of them, and they are functionally independent. So it means that the rank of the this following uh, Jacobian matrix would be n, and uh, this allow uh, the potential to have a lot of properties, but this is quite not restrictive enough. There is a problem that actually is quite rich, and that is the following one. This is to, in addition to the integrability, to ask for further integral of motion, uh, let's say, uh, y. Uh, so y, uh, b. So b can take the value 1 to k. Uh, at most, they can be uh, k equal to n minus 1, because they can be only 2n minus 1, uh, let's say, functionally independent uh, integral. So this is the Liouville uh, theorem and the uh, there exists different type of uh, or let's say in between cases because uh, it can lead to minimally super integrable if k is equal to one or even maximally super integrable if uh, k is equal to n minus one and the case where k is equal to n minus one is the most let's say, interesting and the one that uh, for which the classification have been the most, let's say, ongoing. Uh, so, but this is quite a difficult problem in, in general, even classical mechanics. Uh, so uh, people have restricted to the case of quadratic integral of motion and the case uh, mostly on two-dimensional or three-dimensional conformally flat space. So we can see that this is uh, a difficult problem in general to, to look at. And this is even a, a more difficult problem if one go to quantum mechanics. Here I would just give you some uh, insight on how one can just translate those definitions. Basically, we uh, will consider not only the Poisson bracket, but then the commutator, and the integral will become not only a polynomial in the momentum, but they will become well-defined quantum mechanical operator. And we will ask for a definition where those operators are algebraically independent. So that definition of algebraically uh, independent is more restrictive in some way than uh, functional uh, independence in the sense that uh, we can look at, uh, let's say, uh, a more restricted case of superintegrability than what uh, people can do in context of uh, classical mechanics uh, as well. And it is as well uh, a definition that uh, need to look a bit more carefully uh, because it needs to be defined uh, in terms of if you have a set of uh, integral, uh, it is independent if one cannot form a Jordan polynomial of those uh, integral. So the, just to, to give a few words, because uh, before going to the, let's say, the case that connect with uh, the uh, Pain-Levy uh, transcendent, uh, I think this is maybe important to, to try to go back to why people have been interested into uh, classifying super integrable system with, let's say, uh, first or second order integral of motion, and uh, why it was an interesting problem even without the connection to the Pain-Levy transcendent and uh, why those models uh, that are, let's say, non-exotic uh, add a lot of properties. And this will motivate also the search for model with Pain-Levy uh, transcendent because uh, there is the hope that those models have as well uh, a lot of properties. So uh, from a, a search in the 60s, for the problem of classical and quantum superintegrable system on the two-dimensional Euclidean space. This means uh, an Hamiltonian uh, involving uh, two variables. And uh, then we look for two other integral of motion in addition to the Hamiltonian. And uh, it was demonstrated that those uh, Hamiltonian have properties such as accidental degeneracies, uh, hidden symmetry algebra, they are multi-separable, 
and they are exactly solvable. So this is uh, quite interesting properties for a uh, quantum model or even classical model to try to... Uh, and uh, just to give a few words on the, the idea behind that classification, because this is something that will uh, inspire us when looking for uh, super integrable system with higher order integral of motion. This is to, to write explicitly an uh, ansatz for the integral of motion. So the more general ansatz for a second order integral of motion is given by uh, x a here. So a can take the value one or two. So this is two possibly integral of motion. And uh, the potential is given in the following form. So this is p square over 2 plus v, where v is a function of the two coordinates, x1 and x2. And here I'm just giving explicitly the quantization for the momentum and the explicit form for the angular momentum uh, given by L3. So um, this is given by x1 p2 minus x2 p1. And then if we look for the commutation relation of H with XA, this is an operator of third uh, order. And if we want this to vanish, this will give us uh, a system of equation and that where the unknown are phi A, G I A, and the F I K A and the potential V. So this is a system of uh, that one get of 10 equation with seven unknown. And so this is for one of the integrals, so XA. And then this can be, uh, let's say, uh, solve. And one can obtain the following general solution for XA, but one has uh, other transformation, which are the, because the, this is on Euclidean space, one can use the Euclidean group, uh, so translation, rotation, to distinguish a canonical form for the operator X. So this is the, there is four canonical form uh, that are given in the second uh, equation. And those in some way connect with the theory of uh, separation of variable for the, the Schrodinger equation or even the Helmholtz equation. And it connects with separation in Cartesian polar parabolic elliptic coordinate. And this is something that uh, is used in solving the case of a second order integral of motion on the two dimensional Euclidean space. And there is the following four cases. So the potential can only admit the following four form with the following four type of integral of, of motion. So as we can see, this is very constraining in some way, but still there is the freedom of two arbitrary function. So this is for the case that we have one such quadratically, uh, uh, quadratic integral of motion. So if one try to look for the problem of two such quadratic integral of motion. This means in some way that the, the system can be separated in two types of coordinate system, uh, at least. Uh, and this is much more const constraining. I, I won't give details that is done by exhausting every possibility, but this is the only four potential on the Euclidean space with two quadratic integral of motion, and they can be written in the following form. So as we can see, and those quantum systems are as well uh, super integrable in the classical uh, setting without modification as well. So as we can see, we, we get some interesting deformation of the, the harmonic oscillator or the Kepler-Coulomb uh, model, they are, uh, let's say, 
uh, deformation that depend on the angle. So we can think that those potential can have some application and that has been done uh, in the 70s and 80s as well to try to relate with some uh, quantum chemistry uh, problem. For example, the Hartmann potential is one example of such uh, connection. And uh, just to try to convince us uh, that those can be solved exactly, uh, I will look also at the potential uh, uh, V3 uh, with some more detail. But just to give you some detail uh, on all of them, they separate, for example, the first one in Cartesian polar elliptic, the second one Cartesian parabolic, polar and parabolic and two parabolic system. So this is quite uh, interesting and they can be solved. Excuse me, Professor, so oh. may I ask a question? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, two, uh, two questions. Um, what you, um, uh, can you go back to the previous slide, please? Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, is there any difference between classical and quantum systems at this level? Oh, uh, at this level, because when we look at the compatibility equation, the compatibility equation in the classical and quantum system they uh, are the same and only when we begin to have one of the integral of motion to be of degree three or higher then the classical and quantum case are totally different uh, there is still example uh, that the case are, are, are the same but they are very special but yes here those models can be uh, admitting two integral of motion in the classical setting and this is achieve uh, directly by uh, if we symmetrize the integral of motion in the quantum setting we can just convert in terms of the momentum and then uh, this will be the classical analog oh yeah and uh, since these potentials are super integrable you are able to separate in more than one coordinate system Yes, but there is not, a, let's say, a one-to-one -one correspondence in the sense that one integral will give you, in this case, one coordinate system. Uh, but, for example, the uh, first uh, potential depend, uh, can also be separated in elliptic coordinate. So you can get more coordinate system. Uh, for example, the, this is, the uh, I think, the three-dimensional harmonic oscillator uh, for example, can be separated, I think, in eight coordinate system, even if there is only five, uh, let's say, independent integral. So in some way, uh, you can get even more coordinate system uh, by super integrability. Thank you. Thank you. Professor. Oh, thanks for the question. Uh, and OK, so just to illustrate for this potential V3, also what I mean by exactly uh, solvable, this is uh, when, uh, uh, so if you take the Schrodinger equation, we apply a technique from uh, differential equation and try to obtain uh, the polynomial uh, solution. This will connect with the Laguerre polynomial, and there is some exponential factor, and there is some uh, Xi1, Xi2 at some power. So we try to take into account the behavior at infinity and at zero. And there exists different possibility here that I want to emphasize because beta, which are the, let's say, the coupling constant in the singular term, depending of if beta is, let's say, uh, in between a minus uh, 3 over 4 and minus 1 over 4, or depending of uh, the, the, the range of those parameters, you can get, uh, like, let's say, different physical uh, solution. And here I'm just giving the generic case with the plus minus, but one need to, let's say, look carefully what are the 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 value of beta one and beta two. And, uh, but in some way, uh, because I will give some, I can give some detail uh, toward the end, how one can exploit the integral of motion. Uh, I, I can explain with some detail, uh, if we have time, how we can obtain this in a purely algebraic manner using the, the, algeb the, the integral of, of motion, and as well for some case with Penlevy transcendent. So there exists also some 
purely algebraic way to solve the problem, uh, which for the moment I will put aside and uh, trying just to uh, in the next, let's say, one to slide, just to give some detail on uh, quadratically uh, super integrable system. But after that, I will go to the case of third order and fourth order to try to point out where the pain levy transcendent they appear and what is the form of those uh, potential. But I will restrict everything on the two dimensional Euclidean space. Okay, so just to give you some maybe some motivation because some of you might be interested uh, as well in those uh, model, there exists some generalization as well on many with magnetic field spin uh, on Darbu space even pseudo Hermitian model, uh, Perlick system, they can be also uh, on other type of space. Some of those are called uh, Bertrand spaces, uh, Darbu spaces, or the, the well-known uh, Taubnot or Kaluza client. So there exists a rich literature on trying to classify super integrable system, but still with uh, integral up to the order two. And there exists also a more mathematical, let's say, uh, look at the problem by Miller, Kress, and Kalnins. Uh, this has been ongoing uh, from 98 to 2008 to classify every superintegrable system with integral of at most degree two on the uh, uh, conformally flat space. And this has led to, uh, I'm just giving you some references, but to 58 super integrable model, and they have a very rich connection with a special function, what is called the ASCII scheme of orthogonal polynomial. They admit also Inonu, Wigner, or Boche contraction. So already, if we just look at quadratically super integrable system on two dimensional conformally flat space, they have numerous. Uh, properties and this is why those work in some way they have given hope that if we look for model with higher order integral of motion they will be interesting model from point of view of physics or mathematics and just the last slide on quadratically super integrable system maybe the most uh, important property uh, for what i've been doing is that the case of those quadratically super integrable system have been connected with quadratic algebras. So maybe most of you are familiar with Lie algebras and their representation theory, but even if we look for integral of uh, order two, we cannot close the, uh, the symmetry algebra. So the algebra made by taking the commutation uh, relation among those integral in a Lie algebra. We need to necessarily to go to uh, quadratic algebras and those have been connected with various uh, problem, recoupling uh, problem uh, of uh, what is called the 3G or the 6G symbol, Raka coefficient. So they have very nice mathematical properties. So they have also inspired us to go to uh, looking for model with higher order integral of, of motion. So this was just a, a comment to try to motivate uh, why we will go to higher order integral of motion. And here I will start, uh, let's say, this connection with the pain levy transcendent. So just to uh, summarize what I've been doing so far, I've been looking at the one dimensional case, making the connection for four type of algebraic constraint, Abelian, Heisenberg, conformal ladder with the pain levy. And I've been given some detail on what I call super integrable system and how, if we restrict to second order integral of motion on the two dimensional Euclidean space, we get model uh, with a lot of properties. But this story, uh, actually uh, goes much further with integral of motion of nth order. And this is uh, a problem that is uh, difficult because, uh, for two reasons, because we don't know how to solve the problem of integrability. If we remember the problem for quadratic integral of motion can be solved explicitly uh, in terms of uh, the problem related to separation of variable. If the integral is of higher order, we cannot solve this problem. Only the superintegrable problem 
can be solved, not the integrable uh, problem. And this lead to a nonlinear compatibility equation, which is not the case when the integral is of uh, order two uh, or one. Everything is in terms of rational function or trigonometric function. Uh, so function that satisfy linear differential equation. And this problem has been started in the early 2000 by Gravel, but it connect in the classical case with an old paper by Drac uh, in the uh, 1935, and that has been carried only in the classical case. The quantum case has been started in the early 2000 and has been uh, looked extensively. Okay, so the first case that I would like to to discuss is uh, when you have a third order integral of motion. And here uh, we can see that the integral of motion only admit first and third uh, degree term in the momenta. And this is because the odd and even term, they in some way commute separately. So if we have a third order integral, we only need to take into account the, uh, the term that are linear in the momenta. This is true because the Hamiltonian that we look is Hermitian. Uh, that uh, would not be necessarily uh, the case for other type of uh, Hamiltonian. So here we're looking at Hermitian uh, Hamiltonian, and then that allows us to have the following ansatz. And this is, so this is the more general third uh, degree integral. And this allow to write, and this follow to the, the previous question on the classical case. If we look the third uh, line, so the, the, uh, the constraint, uh, which is G1 Vx plus G2 Vy equal to H bar square over four with some uh, other term, the fact that the, uh, the Planck constant appear in the leading term of this uh, compatibility equation. Uh, this means that the classical problem and the quantum problem will be genuinely different. Uh, so this is a singular limit. And uh, it means as well that we need to look at the classical and quantum case uh, separately. Uh, one cannot take uh, easily limit from the quantum case and then recover the, the classical case. And there is not the same number of classical and quantum potential. So in some way, they are two distinct uh, problem. Okay, so here, uh, and this connect as well with what I've been doing uh, in the first part of the talk with the one dimensional uh, system. The, the key ingredient here is a chassis class of equations. So if we look, uh, the system of equation is up to the third order, but one will need to take some higher order of those equations to create equation for which uh, the potential, uh, let's say, it involves only one of the variable. Because here we make also one assumption that the potential separate in the Cartesian coordinate, which allow to uncouple equation more easily, but that can be carried for other type of coordinate system. And uh, but the the proof will rely on having fourth order equation that can be integrated one time in terms of what is called a chassis equation. And those chassis equation are of third degree. They have the name chassis but they have been classified, let's say more explicitly by Bureau and Cosgrove. So in, uh, if one is interested by looking at those equations, there will be much more detail in, in the work by Bureau and Cosgrove from the, the 50s and the early 2000s. But those equations are the one that uh, are, are generalizing the pain levy transcendent, but they as well connect with pain levy transcendent because they admit, uh, let's say, reduction to pain levy transcendent for some very specific case. And this is those specific case that will play a role. So there is some assumption on those function uh, A of Y, B of Y, C of Y, D of Y up to G of Y, uh, that they are, let's say, rational or algebraic. Uh, and so, 
but there is 13 of those equations. I'm just giving you one of those equations. And I'm, if you can see there is the dot, 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 I'm just giving you the leading part of, of those equations and uh, the, the, the end as well. Uh, and just to show that this equation can be of third order, can be integrated in what is known in the literature as a, a second degree pain levy equation. So this is the second equation where there is the W Y, uh, the W prime prime square. So this is a second degree uh, pain levy equation. And they have been as well, uh, let's say, studied, classified, and the reduction to the pain levy transcendent uh, obtain as well. So the uh, the key is that among those equations so the of the form W prime prime square equal to F of W prime WY, there exists uh, many cases, uh, let's say uh, six, and among those cases there exists a classification uh, and one of them that I call, if you look at the last line, SD1 classified in, as well into subcases. So I'm, I'm not giving, uh, let's say, explicitly details, but one of those, uh, some of those subcases connect with the, uh, the problem that I was mentioning here. So if we obtain a compatibility equation for W, it would be a fourth order. It can be integrated to a third order which is of chassis form, which can then be integrated to a second degree uh, pain levy equation, which appear in the classification and then admit a reduction to pain levy transcendent. So the, at each step, there is, uh, let's say, no trivial transformation, but that can be carried explicitly. And I can give some detail in the, the paper uh, we have done explicitly those computation, but I just want to, to give the highlight of this classification. This is the only five super integrable system on two-dimensional Euclidean space that have separation of variable and Cartesian coordinate. So with a second degree integral and a third degree integral, and they involve the first, the second, and fourth pain levy transcendent. So those systems are in some way, if we look, uh, quite, uh, they looks complicated because they are written in terms of the pain levy transcendent and their derivative, but they as well admit very nice property. And among the, the property, there is the existence of polynomial algebra. I will give some detail in coming slides, but this is just to show that in some way, if we look for nonlinear uh, symmetries, higher order integral, the pain levy transcendent, they, they are likely to appear and they are likely to, uh, to play a role in those uh, areas. And uh, so in this context, this is the five uh, potential that we get. I just want to, to explain very briefly that this can be carried uh, as well for fourth degree. Uh, okay, the uh, classification is quite uh, tedious and it have took us uh, quite some amount of time to do. And uh, there is, uh, I mean, hundreds of cases to take into account ultimately, but those can be, uh, let's say, reduced to four cases with exotic potential. And here I'm just giving you, let's say, the, uh, the key uh, parts, which are the compatibility equation, which are uh, given uh, here. And ultimately, uh, one can obtain uh, for, let's say, the potential, a fourth order equation that depends only on y or x. And that equation can also be uh, solved use, using the chassis class of equation. And here I will just give you a, a, a list uh, and, and some elements, for example, here, the leading term of the fourth degree integral is given by y of L, and the unknown, let's say, uh, function are given by g1, g2, g3, and the uh, lowest 
uh, term is given by this function L, but those depend on W and derivative of W, and W is, uh, let's say, a rational function of uh, P5 and the derivative of P5. So this is a quite complicated form, but I'm just giving you the, uh, the result, which is the following potential given by uh, this form. So if you look the the first two term of this potential, this looks like a singular oscillator. So in some way, that model is a generalization of the singular oscillator. And if we take specific value for the, because the fifth Pelevi transcendent depends on uh, four parameters, if we take specific value, we can even obtain what is called as rational extension of the singular oscillator, and this connect with supersymmetric quantum mechanics. So those models, they contain, let's say, uh, many models that were obtained in the, in the literature by other uh, ways. So I would just give you some uh, uh, explicit form. Here there exists a potential written in terms of the first, the fourth uh, Penlevy transcendent, and we can see that they are deformation of the harmonic oscillator, the singular harmonic oscillator as well. Uh, the one with the first Penlevy uh, is a bit more difficult to interpret, and actually uh, there exists uh, algebra for this model, but so far it's an open problem to obtain, uh, let's say, the wave function uh, of the first potential above. So uh, I won't point out that explicitly, but there exists a lot of open uh, problem as well for uh, young people to look at it, uh, in particular in terms of the first and second Penlevy transcendent. Uh, no one so far has been able to obtain any insight on the wave function. Maybe they are generalization of Lamy polynomial in some in some ways, but this is this is a complicated problem because opposed to the problem of the Lamy operator where you can algebraize by taking a change of variable, all those problems here cannot be put in the algebraic form, at least in a simple fashion. Maybe there exists, uh, let's say, less trivial way to algebraize those problems, but so far, this is as well an open uh, problem. So there is also the third Penlevy transcendent that appear and other potential in terms of the fifth Penlevy transcendent. So there is a list of uh, five potential for the third degree, 12 potential for uh, the uh, degree four, and that search have been uh, evolving in uh, different ways. Uh, so just to give uh, uh, some insight, we have imposed uh, a second order integral of motion. This is key to solving the problem because um, this allows to simplify the compatibility equation. So there is uh, different cases that can be looked at on Euclidean space, separation in polar, elliptic, or parabolic. And so far, only the case of uh, polar or Cartesian uh, lead to Penlevy transcendent, at least up to degree three or four. Uh, this is open problem still for elliptic or parabolic if there is some connection with Penlevy transcendent, if we increase the, the order. Uh, and, okay, uh, so if there is question, uh, someone can always uh, interrupt me and I can go back to uh, earlier of those slides. The, the main idea was to try to convince you that if we only look on the two-dimensional Euclidean space, there exist uh, many of those models that appear, but so far, I have not been telling you uh, like what one can do with the knowledge of those integral of motion. And here I will try to bring a, a partial uh, insert, uh, insert. And uh, I will look at the, this is the fifth case in the list of the five super integrable system with a second and a third order integral of motion. This is the one that depends on the fourth Penlevy transcendent. So uh, 
it, it is explicitly the second degree integral. So this is trivial in some way because this is only the, uh, there is some negative sign uh, at the right uh, place. Uh, so we can see that this A obviously commute with H. What is less uh, easy to see is this integral B commute with the Hamiltonian H. And it depends on the third derivative of what I define as G1, which depends on uh, P4 and the first derivative of P4. So we can see that even if someone uh, tells you that uh, Hamiltonian allow a higher order integral of motion, just verifying that this is well the integral of motion is not. Uh, uh, oh yes, uh, but this Hamiltonian is a separable one, right? Yes, yes, it is separable. Uh, then why we are interested in this case? Okay, uh, for two reasons. Because uh, if we want to look at the problem of higher integral of motion, this is the simplest case to try to understand, let's say, the uh, how the compatibility equation can be solved. And even at this level, one, one needed to go to the Chazy class of equation, and it is not straightforward. And also, the, uh, the other reason is the following, is that those models that uh, I gave, uh, because one could think that I will use the separation of variable directly to then transform the problem into a ODE and then solve this problem. But the, the difficulty is that unlike problem that involve, let's say, the scarf potential or the Pochel teller or Lamy operator, we cannot algebraize the problem, meaning that we cannot apply Frobenius method uh, to this. But here, uh, there exists a connection to supersymmetric quantum mechanics. So this is one of the cases where we can get still inside from separation of variable. But the, 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 the goal also is to try to, to see how one can exploit higher order integral of motion to try to solve problem because in general, a uh, model with higher order integral of motion, they might not even allow separation of variable for most of them in some way. Okay, thank you. Oh, uh, thanks for the question. And uh, just to, to give you some, some detail, the integral, even if they take a very complicated form, at the end, close in the following very, let, let's say, a nice way uh, in, in, some, in some sense, because uh, we can see that there, there is some uh, quadratic term uh, in A, some cubic term in A, so the algebra is non-linear. And there is the Hamiltonian that also appear in this algebra. So this algebra needs to be understood first as uh, algebra of differential operator. And uh, then uh, this uh, can be viewed as uh, an algebra where H, the Hamiltonian, play the role of a constant in some way. Okay, it's not quite the case, but this is, let's say, an analogy with the, let's say, SON uh, algebra for the, the Kepler system and trying to solve for the bound state, for example. And uh, I won't give you detail uh, right now, but I can come back at the end of the talk uh, to give some insight how someone can use uh, some, let's say, uh, deform oscillator algebra to obtain insight on the spectrum of this model purely algebraically. So this is also something that is, is the reason why we try to look at the symmetry algebra because we, like for a super integrable ca classical system, there is that uh, let's say, hope that we can obtain the trajectories purely algebraically. In the quantum setting, we hope to obtain information on the wave function and on the spectrum in a purely algebraic man manner. So this is also the, the hope uh, there. And this is one example where it connects with a cubic algebra. And uh, one can 
obtain representation for this. But this is also a separate uh, problem to try to study, let's say, a cubic or let's say polynomial uh, algebra. Uh, they do appear in other contexts and they have uh, a lot of properties and they admit some, let's say, analog of lowest weight representation in some, some sense. And Casimir also uh, play a role uh, there. Um, okay, just to, uh, let's say, in the next uh, five, uh, seven minutes, uh, try to give you uh, some detail uh, on another case, because so far maybe you have looked the list and we have seen that in the one-dimensional case or the two-dimensional case that I mentioned, there was the first, second, third, uh, fourth, fifth Penlevy transcendent that appeared. But where is the Penlevy six? And uh, that has been uh, the object of some work. Uh, and this connect with separation of variable in polar coordinate. And, and there, there is something very interesting for, uh, even from point of view of classical mechanic, because this model admit also a non-trivial classical analog. And if you want to think of this system that would be in terms of the uh, pain of six, it is a non-linear generalization of Jacobi polynomial in some way, the equation related to the Jacobi polynomial, and it contains uh, various generalization of the Jacobi uh, polynomial equation uh, related to exceptional Jacobi orthogonal polynomial, but it contains as well uh, much more uh, in it. Uh, so even if it looks like a restricted problem, this case is likely to play a role in other areas. So that means that if you have a model that separates in polar coordinate and you look for something that can generalize uh, Jacobi polynomial, this model here, so this T prime, will uh, could be likely to play a role in what you do. And this is written in terms of the pain of V6. And this, uh, model is connected here with a fourth degree integral of motion. And here I give you some reference, but this has been carried also on curved space, in particular on the sphere. But here I will just come back on the on the Euclidean space, and I'm looking for uh, integral of fourth degree of the form L2. I won't present any classification, just this problem that involves some unknown function and with the unknown potential uh, T prime and try to show that we can solve explicitly. And by explicitly, I mean obtaining G1, G2, G3, G0 in terms of a unique, uh, let's say, function that appear also in the potential and that satisfy a nonlinear differential equation. And that equation connect with the pain of V6. And I, 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 here, maybe this is too much detail, but I just wanted to uh, give you explicitly uh, how those functions G1, G2, G3 can be converted in, into those expressions in terms of the, uh, the potential uh, that involve T prime. And uh, here, this is also probably too much detail as well, but I just wanted to convince you that even if we get a fifth order equation that constrain the potential, that equation of fifth order can be integrated uh, twice to get an uh, equation in the classification by Cosgrove. And that equation ultimately can be integrated again to get a second degree pain of equation given at the bottom of the slide here. And that this second degree uh, equation can be transformed into uh, uh, equation of the pain of V6. So ultimately, that potential T prime can be written in terms of the pain of V6 and the uh, derivative of pain of V6. So this is quite a non-trivial problem, but I will give you one example uh, for some value of the parameter Q7, Q8, Q9, Q10. So, and, and here also why I wanted to give this was also to, to tell um, in some way to advertise that sometimes we get equation of 
third, fourth, or fifth degree, and we think that it can be hopeless uh, to solve. But in many cases, they can be also integrated to equations that uh, connect with the pain of a transcendent, and that those work by Chazy, Cosgrove, and Bureau uh, play an important role in doing this. So in some way, I'm telling also a, a recipe how one can try to solve nonlinear uh, equation that can arise in other problem, let's say, uh, where there is symmetry. Okay, so here I would just spend one, two slides uh, to tell you very briefly. The details are not important, but I thought it was at least maybe useful that you get explicitly the equation so you can uh, see uh, what they looks like. So this is one explicit form for the potential T, and this is uh, and this is not explicit, uh, let's say, value. This is a family of solution involving two parameters, alpha and beta. And this can be uh, connected to uh, the explicit parameter gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 4 that appear in the pain level 6. And by some change of variable, I, 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 again, I, I give you the, the function W in terms of the function, uh, in terms of y, which depend ultimately on the angle phi. So this uh, part of the potential only depends on the angle, and it can be written in the following form. For this explicit, let's say, families of uh, solution, which connect in some way with what I call the exceptional orthogonal polynomial. So it's, it's contained inside, let's say, the the uh, potential that I didn't show uh, because it's not quite nice. But if we look at this explicit solution, we get the following Hamiltonian. So this allows us to get some intuition also on what can contain this uh, potential that depend on the angle phi. And we can see here that this potential in some way generalize the uh, potential uh, in terms of 1 over cos square phi, 1 over sine uh, uh, square phi, plus some deformation term. And uh, one can uh, look at this potential by different angle. Uh, it has separation of variables, so it could be looked as well from that side. But here we obtain a potential in terms of trigonometric function only because we look at a specific value. In general, it has no algebraic form, so we will need to rely on the integral. So I just wanted to give you again uh, a connection with uh, the, let's say, uh, polynomial algebra by giving you, this is the second order integral. This is written not in polar coordinate, but in Cartesian coordinate, which is as well uh, convenient for making uh, computation uh, as well. And I give you, again, this is only, uh, I mean, the generic form uh, for that case. Uh, there exists uh, the function G, H, I, K, which would be very complicated. I just give one of it, but this is the form of the fourth order integral in terms of the Cartesian coordinate, which allow to simplify, as I mentioned, the uh, computation. And I will just uh, finish with uh, the uh, form uh, here uh, of the uh, algebra that uh, can be uh, put in the following form. So if I take the commutation relation of what I call A and B, I get the integral C, which is linearly independent, and I can then take further commutation relation, and it uh, satisfies the following as well cubic algebra. So even if the integral of motion are quadratic and quartic, you can still have even uh, a cubic algebra. So there is not a one-to-one -one correspondence between the highest degree of the integral and the degree of the, the algebra. But again, the uh, Structure constant depend on the Hamiltonian and the two parameter alpha and uh, beta. So I will uh, uh, stop here. I can give some more detail uh, if uh, there is question on how to obtain insight on the algebraic derivation. But 
the the main uh, message that I wanted to carry is that uh, there is a lot of interesting quantum systems that are exotic, uh, one dimensional, two dimensional, and most of it uh, for three dimension is also unknown. So there is a lot of open problem to look at, and they have a lot of properties. So many thanks for uh, your time and uh, opportunity to speak uh, here. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. So now the forum is open for questions, clarifications. Questions from the students. Ah, okay. Yeah. Students, do you have any questions? They are not raising any questions. Oh, okay. Um, um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, so, if you have time, can you explain how to get the energy uh, for in the case of quadratic uh, integrals? Yes, yes. Long, long uh, so, uh, I will. Uh, so, uh, whoops, uh, I need to click on. Uh, oh, am I still sharing my screen? Yes. Uh, Oh, okay. So now can you see the slide? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. So thanks. Uh, so uh, so this is, I, I will just briefly go over the case of the quadratic integral of motion. And I will show you the, the potential V3, how, how it's done explicitly. So yes. maybe m most of you know about the algebra uh SL2, SU2, SU11, and how the Casimir uh, play a role in the representation theory, and how we can have some, let's say, IS weight uh, representation, finite dimensional representation. Here, the key uh, element is uh, the deform oscillator algebra. And uh, as you can see, this algebra is much simpler in the sense that the first two commutation relations rely on a uh, ladder operator and the non-linearity is in just what I call the structure function. So this is the function phi of n and the key ingredient is to find what I call a realization of the quadratic algebra in terms of those uh, explicit form. And here uh, it looks maybe ad hoc, but the idea is to say that uh, you can diagonalize one of the operator and the other operator B can be put in a three diagonal form. And then this uh, can be looked explicitly uh, to get uh, the eigenvalue in the, uh, of the Hamiltonian in the sense that if we want the representation associated with this uh, deform oscillator algebra to be finite dimensional, this will impose constraint on the function phi and ultimately will bring constraint on the, uh, on the energy spectrum. So, so in some way, and maybe I will just scroll some uh, slide, but the uh, third potential has the following structure constant and the energy spectrum can be obtained purely algebraically and the structure function can be given in the following form uh, that is given below. So, so whether, whether I can find these details in some paper earlier, yeah, yeah. Uh, because the case of the so the, there is uh, the starting point was done by Descaloyanis in a paper of 2001. Uh, there is some detail that are given, and there is a paper also by uh, Zidanov and uh, from uh, let's say 88 92, where they have. Uh, constructed the representation using uh, approach, using three diagonal uh, matrix. And uh, 
in some way disconnect with the old paper by Levy Leblanc from the 60s, where uh, it connects with the angular momentum and the Raka algebra. So th th those problems have a long history as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thanks. So the students are a bit hesitant to ask questions. Maybe they write to you. Oh, OK, yes. Right. So uh, if anyone has questions, uh, I will be happy to give some detail or point you some reference. Or even some students are curious about some open problem, uh, because there is some uh, open problem, some uh, difficult, some less difficult. So I can always uh, share uh, insight on that if anyone want to see what are the, the blank spots in the, the literature uh, as well. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Thanks. So since I'm not getting any questions, I'll, shall we conclude the session, Professor? Oh, okay. Oh, many so, thanks. Yeah, let me thank, and uh, let me conclude the session by thanking Professor I am Martin for giving a very interesting talk on superintendent systems, classical, uh, I mean, mostly on quantum systems. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Thank you accept for accepting our invitation and giving a very interesting talk on this topic thank you thanks i will write to you the other details by email oh, okay thank you